late 80s, 1980s, BioBend wanted to do something more to stimulate people coming through the house instead of a plain museum setting. The introduction of food to the table makes it more alive and sort of an instant in time. So you have to go back and look at how food was done, what foods were made, the different recipes, how food has evolved. And so I got into doing that. My name is Henry Gadbois, and I'm a faux food artist. Faux food, or fake food, as some people call it, is just an imitation of the real object because in historic houses you couldn't possibly use real food and all that expensive furniture that, that they have. So you use the artificial food and I called it faux foods. I've been creating the faux food art since about 1988-89. Well, it was because BioBend needs some of the faux foods to decorate, especially at the Christmas season. So that's what really started me. So you supply them with what they need and then it, it just keeps going on. And especially as different museums want different objects. For instance, the boiled tongue is a very popular object because people come in and go, ah, and you know, they're repulsed by it, but this makes it more alive. And I can't think of anything else that repulses people, but it's fun. The first thing I made was, I think, a coffin pastry. This is something that they would make a heavy paste with a lid, and it would be decorated, and it would be out of pastry, and then they would fill it with things. Like one time, I read a recipe where it's a whole chicken that's inside of a chicken and then pieces on top, and then it's served that way. My biggest seller are oysters, and I use the real shell, and then I press the clay into each shell so that it is unique to that shell. And then I fire the piece of clay, and then I paint it, and then I put it in the shell, and then I pour it with a clear resin so it looks like the juice of the oyster. It's clay, it's just mud. That's why our garage is so dirty with the, the casting. If you take a real object and you make a little plastic box, correct size for it, I pour it with plaster of Paris and I dip the object in halfway. And then when the plaster starts setting up, in each corner you sort of dig a little hole so it's a match. Then when you pour the top, you let the plaster set up and then you oil it so that the new plaster will not stick to it. And then you cover it up with plaster and you wait for it to dry. You undo the plastic box, you take it out, and you pry the two pieces apart. So, I mean, that's the whole process. Of course, when you get it assembled, you paint it. Then it's finished. Just doing it, it's keeping you busy. It's a creative process, really, and it's fun to do. It is always nice when people look at your food. I've even had friends that know I make the faux food and he picked up a piece of candy to bite one time and actually bit it before he realized he had picked up the wrong object. So it's fun. Not that I enjoy fooling people, but it's nice when I do.